I know there are plenty of people that will watch this video that'll hate most everything I say in this review. Cool. It's fine. Your experience, your perspective may very well differ from mine. But I got to confess. I watched AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night. I did. I sat down on my couch, had my laptop prepared to tweet and all of that. And I watched all two hours. But then, let me be completely honest here, I looked at the TV for two hours and actively engaged in viewing for maybe less than an hour. Meaning that this show did a terrible job of connecting with me, that this show did a terrible job of engaging me, of getting me invested in what was going on. I zoned out at least 50 to 60% of this damn show. Why? Because what was there to really fucking care about? That's why. And I know plenty of people love AEW and love what it represents and love what it means and they live in the land of Khanistan and everything Tony Khan does is brilliant. Brilliant! and genius. And look, I love the fact that there's an AEW around. It is nice to have something refreshing because you can clearly tell that Vince McMahon is in the profits only business. And yeah, granted, you're a business. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make profit, but he clearly doesn't care about his product anymore. So from a customer, from a fan standpoint, like the experience is different. So it is nice to have somebody like a Tony Khan who you can say at least legitimately cares about his product. Does he always care in the right way? And does he always do the right things by it? Oh, hell no. But at least you could tell, like, he truly fundamentally cares. And I respect that about him. And I've lost respect for Vince McMahon over the years because he doesn't care the same. He just doesn't. And how do you know? Because it shows. See the Royal Rumble. But for all these people talking about how great AEW is all the time and, you know, how awesome this is and how refreshing it is. I, I asked like, damn, are we that different of people that you think this is great engaging television every week? Are my standards just way too unreasonably high? A product of my age and my generations and my experiences as a wrestling fan? Or is wrestling just now appealing to the lowest common Meltzer nominator as I would call it? And you only care about the in-ring flips and kicks and that's it. I don't know. It's like I watched this opening segment. And I did actually watch this for the most part. Although I truly didn't give much of a fuck. But you've got John Moxley taking on Wheeler Yuta. you got Orange Can Cassidy and Don Housen on the outside. So, you know, two kind of characters that you'd like to see featured more as characters versus in-ring people. But here they're on the outside for a Wheeler Yuta that I don't give a fuck about. Why should I give a fuck about? You've given me no reason to give a fuck about him. Taking on a John Moxley where I'm saying, don't we have something much better for John Moxley than this? And then even post-match, out it comes Daniel Bryan. He appears and seemed to be alluding to some type of tag team. Oh boy, yeah, let's take these two guys together and smash them together. Let's make a two-man power trip. Now, if you truly did a two-man power trip, that might be intriguing. But if you're doing this just to build it to, to a feud between the two of them, it's like, okay. But does that really rock my socks? Does that make me be like, man, I got to see that, like, let's say, an MJF versus CM Punk rivalry? Absolutely not. It could make for some good television, I confess, but, like, that's one of your big angles for the night and it was still primarily all match based you wasted time with the match to get to the thing that you gave a fuck about then why not just have moxley and daniel bryan excuse me brian danielson it's some sorry sometimes i slip i probably call him dean ambrose sometimes too my apologies i don't mean that disrespectfully but if you're just going to get to moxley and danielson then just get there and cut some of this shit out you know what we don't need to see are any segments that feature Brandy Rhodes on a microphone ever again. Like for all the shit with Vince McMahon and how out of touch he is with this product, 
Well, one thing I'll give him at least a little bit of credit for is he knew Brandy Rhodes was fucking cheeks. And he knew he didn't want her anywhere near being an on-screen character because she doesn't have it. She fucking sucks. And to those saying, well, you didn't enjoy her getting owned on the mic? No! It's like you being a ringer in the Special Olympics and winning. Are we going to fucking celebrate that? Hell no! It was stupid. And then I zoned out. Pac was, apparently was wearing a fucking wrap around his eyes. A blindfold, as they call him. Like he was Sandra Bullock in whatever movie that fucking was. And I don't even care what's going on because who gives a fuck? The House of Black, who gives a shit? Malachi Black, whoopity do. Adam Cole cut a somewhat intense promo and it's like, yes, more of that, please. But I don't fucking take you seriously because they've done a bang up shit, shit job with you. Nyla Rose versus Ruby Soho was a stupid fucking match. I got way too much time. Sloppy, exactly what you would expect out of two of them. No disrespect, but goddamn, that's what it is. You got the gun club attacking Jungle Boy. Okay, maybe we got something here. But Billy Gunn just fears Sting. That's all it is. So you're trying to divert his energies in this time. But this is the extent of how you're going to feature your damn tag champions. Like, why would you... This company, it, it's ridiculous. They get more interested in building these guys up and gals up to a spot to get them ready to be champions. And then as soon as they're champions, they yank them off of fucking TV. And not in a, hey, we're going to feature them as a big deal and a special presentation every couple of weeks. No, just random shit that really doesn't accomplish anything or move the needle on anything. Look at Hangman Page. Like, can you really tell me his run as champion is exciting or thrilling? Can you really tell me that the buildup between a, for a match with him and goddamn Lance, Arch, Lance Archer is all that damn exciting? Like, Hangman Page is your world champion, and on this show, he felt again like a second-class citizen, just like he did in the entire program with Brian Danielson. He certainly wasn't a primary focus on this show. It's the way it came across to me. Just saying. And then you get to CM Punk versus MJF. The clear highlight of the night. You might have liked other things on this show, but... You certainly didn't see people praising this as some type of great exhibition of professional wrestling television for good reason, because it didn't deserve that label. That's for damn sure. Um, but damn, like even this match, just because you can fill 40 plus minutes with it doesn't mean you should. Like you basically did a two falls match here. You might as well have made it a two out of three fall stipulation match and had MJF win the two falls. That's basically what you damn did here. Like the match was good, but yeah, at some point in time, man, get to the point. Just because you can have long matches doesn't always mean you should. Like the subplot with Wardlow before the second pinfall, like that shit was well done. There were things that were well done, executed well here. Sometimes you want to have a few more minutes and say, man, if you had a few more minutes, you could have really told the right story. You'd hit all the right points that would have flowed better. But other times you could say, if you cut five to seven or even 10 minutes off of this, would you miss anything? And the answer is no. Which that in and of itself to me is a much bigger problem because to those that sit there and say, like, Dynamite is must-watch television for me every week. Is it, though? Is it really? And for those that will geek out and say, I can't wait for this match. I can't wait for this match. Yeah, at some point in time, your interest in that even wanes. See ROH. See New Japan. Like, at some point in time, you've got to have more. There has to be more to create must-see television. And right now... AEW does not create must-see television. I intentionally sat down with the sole intent of watching this show on Wednesday night for two hours, tweeting about it for two hours, and I zoned out for half of it. 
and hardly tweeted anything. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think the only thing I tweeted was at the end of the night, talking about like MJF and Punk was the only pretty good thing on the show. And I stand by that. And even then, it went too long. Wrestling shouldn't be this hard. And I understand that Dynamite is going to have a match-heavy presentation. Rampage is going to have a match-heavy presentation. They're appealing to a fan base that is small and niche in its views. And they are going to be very heavy in their match presentation because that's how Uncle Dave would book this shit. But if you're going to do that, then every match needs to be a banger. And every match is not a banger. A lot of these matches are wastes of fucking time. And what you're not doing is developing characters and developing stories that people can invest in, that people can buy into these characters and develop a connection with. Damn, like, you can't say this show sucked. I think that is unfair. Because there were good things on it. But if I didn't watch this show this week and somebody showed me the highlights or the clips, there would not be one single thing that would have been like, man, I wish I would have seen that live. There's not one thing to be like, man, I feel like an idiot for not watching it live. There's not one thing that makes me jump out and say, man, I need to see that again. And we need to get back to that in wrestling because that's what matters. That excuse for the return customer, the return match, return business. Creating that element of must-see television. AEW does not do that. And this show was not must-see television in any way, shape, or form. And I think the old viewership numbers you saw for it this week, in some ways, in some ways, were a reflection of that. The social media engagement during the show are a reflection of that. Now, you want this to be different than WWE, then create an environment that captivates people, puts them on their edge of their seats, and makes them feel stupid for missing a show. I don't feel stupid now if I miss an episode of Dynamite. Because by and large, I don't feel like I missed anything. And there was absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing on this show that was so great, so awesome, so critical to any story or anything that makes me feel like it was must-see TV. Hence why I zoned out for half of it. We got to get better about this. Got to. It just shouldn't be this hard.